but I like the way you said mm-hmm. your mom was there for you. Yes. Every single step of the way. Yeah. What would you tell a parent right now who is watching? Yeah. And yeah. their child mm-hmm. is perhaps going through the mm-hmm. same situation like you are going through. What mm-hmm. would you tell a parent who is watching? What I would tell them is that just be just be present and at least also just be concerned, even if it's creating just five minutes yeah. to find out how, how their school was, how are they coping. I think that really helps a lot. Good people and welcome to Sitam Church Online. Man, I have missed you guys. I have missed creating content for Sitam Church Online. I just want to take this opportunity to appreciate Pastor Tabitha for stepping in for me and swapping um, a couple of months here and there on Saturday uh, together with me. And I'm so, so glad to be back. I will be talking about women in this particular segment. I have just been having this nudge in my heart and in my spirit to talk about women and their impact, especially in the marketplace and just the spaces that God has allowed us to be in. So in this particular one, we'll be focusing on a very dear friend of mine. I met her when I was uh, fellowshipping in at Sitam Karen, then I was in campus and we met in a fellowship called Transformers. So I'm not going to talk much about her <laughs> i want her to actually talk about herself karibu sana ruth thank you very thank you very much karibu it's so good to have you here thank you and uh, we'll just be taking some time to talk about your life to talk about who ruth is yes. uh, but before i i give a glimpse of who exactly ruth is please introduce yourself Hello, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm-hmm. My name is Ruth Maria Mwanzia. Yeah. I'm a born again Christian. Mm-hmm. And apart from that, I'm an entrepreneur, a business coach, a consultant, mm-hmm. and also an author. And thank you so much for having me. You are most welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Um, you have written a book. Yes. And you have it here with us. Yes. The Girl from Kiandoni. Yes. I've had an opportunity of reading it. Yes. And um, I'd like us to pick our conversation from here. No Please problem. just take us through your childhood experience. Um, now that we are looking at youth, Ruth as the entrepreneur, yes. we are looking at mm-hmm. Ruth as the author, this woman who is doing manufacturing, yes. you know, which is a space yes. that is normally predominated by men. Yes. And yes. to have a woman in that space right now is, yes. is something quite inspiring. Thank so you. just take us through your childhood. How was it like mm-hmm. growing up for okay. you? Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. And those are good memories because mm-hmm. I believe our stories shape us and mm-hmm. the person we become. So for me, I did not grow up in Nairobi. Most people assume because maybe the way I speak my English, I yeah. had to learn, <laughs> I had to learn, I had to go through a lot of holiday tuition classes wow. just to learn English and mathematics. Mm. So I'm your village girl and all that <laughs> and that's not a bad thing yeah. so for me um, I, I was born in uh, Kitui a small mm. remote village in Kitui West mm. called Chondoni village mm. Chondoni means a basket oh that's how it's it's pronounced Chondoni, yes, Chondoni. my bad guys yeah. <laughs> so Chondoni means a, a basket it could be a basket of uh, of good things okay so we also experience a semi arid type of climate mm. therefore rain is not promised you only have two rain seasons only this time due to climate change that's when we are noticing a little bit of green mm. but naturally it's usually a very dry environment so for me just growing up there and why I grew up there is because my mom was a school teacher there mm. and my dad owned a shop before he ventured later on into his career because mm. after after he graduated also he tarmacked for a while he was not getting a job he was like you know what why can't I pursue entrepreneurship for some time yeah. and that's how we ended up actually just living in the village mm-hmm. and those years I would say from 1989 mm-hmm. all the way to 1997 I was actually there in the village so I went to baby class there the mm-hmm. school was called the Chondoni primary school baby mm-hmm. class all the way to grade five I actually schooled at the Chondoni primary school and also we did not have like our classrooms were not very well uh, facilitated mm. and all and I remember our first class was just made of like reeds and woods wow. tied tied together wow. also we are not using pens we actually 
actually for like fr- from baby class to grade one, we used to write with sticks mm. on the ground and shape the letters and mm. um, and everything. Also, mm. our school did not also have like a bowl that time, so we'd also actually take turns to go to the river and fetch also water for school yeah. and all that. Then after school, go and like collect firewood and everything. Then we learned in just in Kamba and in Swahili that time mm. we did not have uh, English or anything. So when I came here in Nairobi, my I thank God that my parents later on, my dad got a good government job, mm. uh, but still left my mom behind and also us behind because he, he had to come to Nairobi to establish himself. And once now he, he felt like he wanted to give us the best gift, the best education. That's when I transferred now from Chondoni Primary to now Makini Primary School, mm. a very well esteemed school. Mm-hmm. So when I came, I'm this village girl. Mm. I don't know how to speak English and I'm going to this executive school i don't know how to speak english i don't know how to carry myself and then that time like it was just my dad so he just back for us very simple lunch because mm. our tradition of food is githeri so m- most of the times so we actually just carry that mixture of maize and beans to school and kids that are curly, they are carrying like french fries mm. sausage very good baggers, food, food baggers, <laughs> and everything that us get good. so that's what actually resulted me to being bullied at mm. at first and I'd also say another thing that also resulted for me to being bullied first of all I did not know English I'd never used a fountain pen before or even oh. a biro pen before when I came, we used to use pencils and mm. exercise books so when I, when I was given a fountain pen with some ink mm. I would actually mess my dress and it oh used to my. be a red dress and kids would make fun of me, every time they would speak to me I was stammering because mm. I didn't know how to, how to respond so I would make my Swahili with Kamba because I did not know English (laughs) and everything. A lot of things happened and also my puberty started up little bit earlier and mm. I didn't know how to even handle my menses so I also went through a lot of period stigma period yeah. shaming because I would actually mess myself because oh. I started my periods exactly at 12 years old mm. and my mom that time was up country so there was no one to really mentor me or take me through like this is how you handle yourself during the menses mm. and all that so I went through a lot of and then at the same time I also mm. developed an eyesight problem actually the same year okay. the teacher would call me like read out the blackboard the words like I have I have written on the board mm. I couldn't be able to see so the kids thought that I was illiterate oh. and so at uh, that time I was developing short sightedness and all that so I became short sighted that time I've won specs since class 5 mm. so I wasn't like seeing well at the same time I had to get braces so I was just and then I was big so I was looking out of oh, <laughs> out of <laughs> the place the village girl the plump fat village girl and they'll call me names like you know ugly darkling oh fat my. so and they'd ask my sister was very slim and slender so they'd ask are you guys really related your sister looks like a model how come you turn out to be that way and all that so yes i've gone through a lot of bullying mm. just because of my school background yeah. and because i had that background of just being brought up in the in the up country which for me later on i came to appreciate because at that time i was feeling like really bad about it really stressed about it Mm. but with time when my mom came to Nairobi she started reading to me like bible verses and it was a time I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I felt so so unworthy and she's like no you're fearfully and wonderfully made Mm. and should look for those good verses and make sure that every morning we Mm. read the bible together before I leave the house because even sometimes I didn't want to go to to school then I used to stress it so I used to Mm. buy like snacks put them under my bed mm. and all that then so that made me like I continue just being very pa- fat and plumpy mm. girl and all that so the kids were uh, actually and this went on all the way until like grade seven so wow. it was quite it was quite an experience of me just transitioning from my rural school to my urban school and what I noticed is that Actually, uh, this needs. This is also a topic that needs to be talked about because mm-hmm. a lot of kids are going through bullying in school, but they are very shy of actually just of speaking out. Yes. And sometimes you tell the parent what you're going through, but they don't take you seriously. They think it's something that you can overcome. Yeah. And this is what has also made some kids be very introverted. Mm. They don't want to participate during like the physical games or extracurricular activities because they believe you know they are good for nothing. Mm. So it's still something that. That is still happening up to date but yeah. anyway, that was my 
personal experience of me growing up in Kitui mm. County. Wow. Yes, yes. And, and just to understand, yes, um, yes. you mentioned that you moved mm. from the rural setting yes, to yes, an urban setting. Yes, At what yes. point were mm. you, how old were you by this time? Uh, so that time, uh, I would say the time I was moving to Nairobi, I was 11 and a half years old. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. And yeah. Uh, just to encourage, mm. I'd like us to talk a little bit more mm. about yes, your... Yes, yes your preteen experience. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that you've mm-hmm. said um, there are so many young people and yes. preteens who go through yeah. bullying in school yes. and sometimes, yes. you know, mm-hmm. the parent will say, ah, that is just normal. You can you can mm-hmm. go through it. But I like the way you've said mm-hmm. your mom was there for you yes. every single step of the way. Yeah. What would you tell a parent right now who is watching yeah. and yeah. their child mm-hmm. is perhaps going through the mm-hmm. same situation like you are going through? What would you tell a parent who is watching? What I would tell them is that just be just be present mm. and everything because my mom not had like most of the times I was struggling to go to school yeah. because I was so afraid of the of the bullies and this there's an experience that I've not actually I just remembered it right now mm. but it relates to this actually without like makeup I have a little scar here oh. and it's because uh, it's a bully who took a rock oh and he actually hit me him that my forehead was what? at an upstairs uh, class mm. I was I was I don't say so he aimed and he just hit me and all that it just like he just hated me for like for no reason so, so it's okay so that's a scar <laughs> that i usually just you mm. know i carry it from my childhood and and everything although it was expelled from school because of the you know they took the discipline matters mm. and it was not only my case he had done so many other things mm. so yeah but for me just hitting me and i had to go to hospital and all that were you bleeding yeah. yes i was actually oh bleeding that to actually call my dad my mom had gone to up country that time we had to come to school mm. i had to get rush to hospital it was just it was a very crazy ordeal and mm. he was asked like why did you like why did you do that it's like i just hated her i couldn't stand her and after like he did not give a reason yeah. so i had to find my own like closure mm. of why he actually did what he did so i would tell the parents is to be very present mm. and also to check the behavior and the pattern of this of this of this girl yeah. and behavior and pattern of this because even some they're actually cutting i did not resort mm-hmm. to that but i but i had friends who are cutting themselves with mm. a like with a razor mm. blade mm. and everything then they hide it with their school with their school so i actually mm. saw that in makini school like some kids were going when through you were bullying. still in school at that time yes some kids who had gone like through a lot of like bullying so they used to cut them themselves the razor and you know it's just it was just so crazy but would report those like would report those cases mm. so that's actually as the parent to be very present in their in their kids life and at least also just be concerned even if it's creating just five minutes yeah. to find out how, how their school was how are they coping i think that really helps a lot and yeah. for me what helped is that also being the christian background where we actually had to do morning devotion mm. before school and my mom realizing i'm actually struggling so much with self-esteem mm. that's what really helped yeah. me yeah. though it took a long time and that's what has also made me like to be an introvert every time i go into a new room i'm still scared how will people perceive me mm. so yes and i struggled a lot with people pleasing because i want to mm. please people so they don't like hurt me yeah. so yes there are some consequences i'm still i still had to bear yeah. after the experience yeah. yes. how how yes, are you able yes. to deal with mm-hmm. um issues of self-esteem people yes. pleasing because yes. um, yeah. of course we yes. grow up as teens yes, and, yes, uh, yes i mean we grow up mm-hmm. in life and we get mm-hmm. through that stage as teenagers yes. and pre-teenagers yes. but how are you able mm-hmm. to get out of it is it something mm-hmm. that you you are able to do when you are still mm-hmm. a teenager yeah or that did that now mm-hmm. get eventually into your adulthood and mm-hmm. how did it affect your adulthood if at all it did uh, yes, it really affected my adulthood and sometimes it still does, though I have gone through a lot of also therapy, I would say, and prayers yeah. and also reading a lot, I would mm. say that as what has helped me. Because for me, to be honest, still sometimes I struggle to say no. And I know my priorities, like I need to be there for my friend's event, mm. but I know I have like so many things that are there aligned and I'll not be 
present fully for my friends event mm-hmm. so yes i would say yeah it's still it's still a struggle for me one of the biggest struggles is actually like you know like saying no and everything mm-hmm. sometimes like you know um i sleep like the last person because i want to wash the dishes mm-hmm. I want to make sure that the kitchen is very 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 clean <laughs> sometimes i also really i think su- it's a first one thing yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes yes yeah. yes and sometimes i also i sacrifice like my happiness also for other people and all and I would still show up to my friends events or function even if I'm not feeling well because I'm not able to actually you know say no and all that and also end up like you know being in compromised like kind of relationships mm. because you know yeah this person is like wrong for you mm. but because you're not able to actually say no mm. and, and stand your ground and have boundaries yeah. then that take gets taken advantage oh, of yeah. so this is something that I've really I've really struggled with mm. but I, then I also met up with with a Christian uh, counselor and yes. everything and so she she just took me through and just told me you know Ruth you're worthy you're valuable you know mm. all that so we went through a lot of classes as well mm. and I believe that has just helped me know how to you know set my boundaries set my priorities and really know how to protect also my inner peace and my in our space because yeah. sometimes also if I'm not able to do a lot of things sometimes I can also be a bit overreactive and all that so because mm. I'm always on the go 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 so she's like no I need to slow down sometimes mm. and learn how to say no and take care of myself yeah. yeah so it's something that I have gone through out of the childhood experiences for me I went through oh, that's what I would uh, that's what I would say in interesting for me. I like the way right <laughs> now you're very self-aware <laughs> you know and i think that's oh, that's also one yeah. of the things that help yeah. us to to come out of these things of um, yeah. self esteem and people pleasing mm-hmm. yes, um, yes when when you find mm-hmm. yourself self aware yeah. uh, the things yeah. that you like the things mm-hmm. that you don't like and yes. just clearly mm-hmm. drawing boundaries mm-hmm. you know yeah. i realize that yeah. boundaries are very healthy um in relationships you've mentioned mm-hmm. about relationships which is something i'd like us also to touch on um yeah. in our next video but before we conclude this yes. and move into the next video yes who are some of your role models when you were growing up as a young person who influenced how mm-hmm. um you wanted to be or who mm-hmm. you wanted to be when you were growing up yeah so i would say some of them like for me it was Oprah Winfrey mm-hmm. I used to watch her <laughs> lot just the way she carried herself with so much grace yeah. and she had so much wisdom and knowledge and all that and that's what, that's what made me actually pursue my first degree because mm-hmm. my first degree is in mass communication electronic media mm-hmm. I just used to like the way she was just well put also Catherine Casavuli mm-hmm. I used to watch her a lot on Citizen and and just the media Julie Julie Gishuru yeah. and also another lady who really impressed me was Wangari Mathai and she really fought for the environment yeah. and for Kenya being green. Mm. Yes, yeah, so those were like my really role models growing up yeah. and I think that's why I ended up taking communications because I see they would they, they would express themselves have like be all like be very confident so I aspired to be that mm. when I actually grow up yeah. awesome awesome yes. excellent yeah and you can yeah. definitely see you de- you're taking that direction for sure oh, amen. <laughs> amen. we thank god for what yeah, god is doing in your god. life Ruth. Yeah. and um yeah. even as yeah. we put this into a close what we are saying in summary yes. is that yeah. we are worth it amen. you know i'm reminded yeah. of scripture in yeah. jeremiah yes. um yes. it's yes. many people say it's 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 cliche it may sound cliche but it's yeah. actually true it's yes. it's amazing yes. when when you hear words coming out of god's mouth and true. he says that he He alone knows the plans that yeah. he has for you. True. I mean, who would yeah, have true. thought that the lady from Chandoni, yes, Chandoni, Ch- Chandoni yes. would come all the way here and yeah. be giving us her story. You know, yeah. I mean, we serve a big yeah. God and Amen. he's a God who knows so our end from the beginning. He's true. the one who knows yeah. our life's plan. He's the one who has a great plan and a great purpose for true. us, yeah. So if you're watching yeah. this video, we pray that um this first segment has really encouraged you to know that you are worth it before God. He has a great plan for you. He has a great purpose for you. There's nothing that we 
go through in our lives, no trial, no temptation that we go through and God is caught unawares about it. It may catch you unaware, but it definitely does not catch God unaware. And so we pray that even as we continue to um, get into the life of Ruth, that this mm-hmm. story is going to inspire you, that this story is going to transform your thinking and your outlook in life. Please do join us for the next video right here on Sitam Church Online. God bless you.